Hey there, stampers. This is Sherry Roth with uh, Sherry Stamped Treasures. Uh, today I'm going to show you this fun little explosion box. Um, so you open the lid and it pops open and it's got one of the little houses inside. Hopefully you can see that. And it's got a couple little pockets so that you can include a gift card or some photos and a little message. Um, you could also put photos on this panel as well. So it would be a great way to present a um, a Christmas gift and it's nice to have a package that you can put under the tree. Alright, you'll be amazed at how simple it is. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so to create the box um, we are using the gift box punch board. So I'm going to open it up because I'm going to start with a 12 by 12. So what I've done, and I've got this idea from Karina Chin, um, I want to make the biggest box that I can with a 12 by 12. So if we look at the chart that's on there 12 by 12 the biggest box is 4 by 4 by 4 so that's what we're gonna do and the start line is XL so it's the extra L extra large start line um, and we don't have to for what we're making we don't need to pay attention to the diagonal line okay so I'm gonna attempt this upside down I'm starting with a piece of 12 by 12 cherry cobbler cardstock and I'm hoping you can see my measurements here, see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do, this is the start line, so there's small, medium, large, and extra large. And so it told me to line it up with the extra large, so I'm going to line up the edge of the cardstock with the XL. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to, oh this is awkward, going upside down. Okay, so I'm going to score there, and I'm going to, <laughs> this is really awkward. I don't know if I can do this. Oh, there we go. I apologize for my arm being in the way. Okay, so I'm going to score down and score across and then punch. So three things on each side, down, across, and punch. And then I'm going to rotate it to this side. I'm going to line it up with the XL. And I'm going to go down, across, and punch. Rotate it again, line it up with the XL, and go down, across, and punch. And then on the last side, I apologize for my phone ringing, I go down, across, and punch. Now if you look on all four sides, you can see this little triangle there. So what we want to do is we want to punch those out. So if you flip it over and line it up with that XL line, you'll be able to punch out. All of those notches will line up. So we're going to line it up on all four sides and just get rid of those little triangles. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to remove these triangular pieces, so these corner pieces. So that one, that one, that one, that one, all four of them, so that it looks like this. And we're going to trim down to the score line on opposite sides. So you can see here, I've cut off my corners, so here, here, and then the two up here and I've trimmed down to the score line on this side and then also on this opposite side, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our pockets. So you can see here I've marked adhesive, adhesive. So these are gonna fold in like this and like this to create our pockets. So then you'll put adhesive here and adhesive here and fold it in. You might find that when you go to fold initially, you'll have to trim these a little bit shorter. Like if you look here, you can see that I've pre-trimmed those a little bit. So you might have to trim those down just so that they don't get caught and so that your pocket sits nice and flat. Okay. Now as far as adhesive goes, I would suggest using the Tombow liquid glue just because you can get a nice thin line of the glue on there so that it doesn't reduce the size of your pocket. Okay, um, so just put it just along there and just along there. It, on this one you can put it a little bit up here as well um, and then let it set. So I usually put something heavy on top of it um, and let it set before I add anything into the pockets. Okay, so that will create the base of the box. 
And then for the lid, we're going to use a six by six piece of cardstock. So for this particular one, I've used Emerald Envy and I've scored it at one inch on all four sides. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. And then again, what you want to do is you want to trim opposite sides. So you can see here, that side has been trimmed to the score line and this side has been trimmed to the score line. And then we're going to fold along all of the score lines. Make it nice and crisp. And I'll show you another little trick that I like to do as well. Because sometimes your score lines don't always end up to be perfectly even. So what I like to do is I like to angle my angle my edges a little bit so that when you go to oh, it's not folded very well is it that needs to be snapped a little bit okay so that when you go to assemble your box you don't have that little bit sticking above that side so it ends up nice and even so what you're going to do is you're going to put a little bit of adhesive on all four sides and just fold it in like this Okay, we can go ahead and do that. So this, I'm going to use Fast Fuse for this. You could use Tombow, but then you kind of need to hold it until it sits, or sets. And I just don't have the patience for that, so Fast Fuse is much faster. So I'm going to stick that together like that. This piece will go in here. And fast Fuse sticks so well, you actually don't even need a whole lot of it. That will go on there and then that will fit nicely on your box. Okay, so let me go ahead and give you the measurements for the layers. Let's start with the lid, since we put the lid on the box. So this mint macaron piece, it measures uh, three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And then I've used the presents and pine, or presents and pine cones, is that what it's called? Yeah, Presents and Pine Cones DSP from the Holiday Catalog. And it measures 3 and 5 eighths by 3 and 5 eighths. And, and then I've used the Pretty Pines Thin Lits dies to decorate it. And then the Emerald Envy and Cherry Cobbler twines with a little twine with a little pine cone on there to decorate it. Super cute. And all of this stuff is from the Holiday Catalog. And then when you open it, these panels here, you need three pieces, if you're copying it exactly as is, three pieces of Emerald Envy. So one for each of these three layers, or three squares. And those measure three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So th those are the layers. So it'll be the ground here and then these two panels. And then the patterned paper measures three and five eighths by three and five eighths. So you'll notice that it's the same size as what's in here. I've just chosen a different pattern for what's on the lid. All right, so that's that. And then these inserts, which are perfect, like I said, for a photo or a gift card or a message. Uh, your white piece measures three and three eighths by three and three eighths. And your Emerald Envy piece measures three and five eighths by three and five eighths. And then I've just used the coordinating washi tape along the top on both of these. So both of them are the same size. And like I said, make sure you let your Tombow sit set before you slide anything in and out um, because you don't want your, to, your card to get stuck in there. All right, and then this greeting is from the Tin of Tags stamp set, which is also in the holiday catalog. And then I use the, use the layering circles framelits to cut those out. And then the house uses, the house was done using the Sweet Home Bundle, which is on page 40 of the holiday catalog. Um, and I will share a separate video on how to put that together. I just don't want this one to be too long. All right, the snow, I used that artificial snow that you can get at the craft store. I just put Tombow all over the base and then put the artificial snow on there and just sprinkled a little bit of Dazzling Diamonds just to add a little bit of glitter. But we have um, mica flakes in the catalog that would look really cool on there as well. All right, so hopefully that's inspired you to create one of these. They really are very simple to make and you don't necessarily have to put the house on the inside. You could put anything. You could put another little box in there with a little gift inside, which would be really cute. All right, so if you're looking for more inspiration, feel free to visit my blog at www.stamptreasures.com. Thanks for watching.